So in this uh, screencast, we're going to have a look at what is the optimum the blade angle to have. And uh, to do that, we're going to look at a particular propeller. So we're going to look at the airfoil shape, Epler 374. It is a particular shape of airfoil, and it's uh, used on propellers. And when you go to airfoil.com, uh, or airfoils.com, you can download uh, the data for for this airfoil and for, for many others. So it's given in terms of lift and drag, but we know for, for a propeller it's, it's torque and thrust, or thrust and torque. But um, we just leave it with lift and drag. So I think you understand that when we're talking about lift, we're really talking about thrust. When we're talking about drag, we're really talking about torque when we refer to propellers. But, uh, so that we don't get confused, we'll just leave it with lift and drag. So on this graph here, we have the coefficient of lift versus alpha, the angle of attack. So you can see as the angle of attack increases, the coefficient of lift increases until we get to the stall. And over here, you can see that we have the coefficient of drag versus alpha, and you can see that um, the coefficient of drag remains reasonably constant for small angles of attack, but as the angle of attack begins to increase, then the coefficient of drag increases exponentially. And what's really important then is the lift to drag ratio. And you can see there is a sweet spot. So when the lift to drag ratio is at its highest, for this airfoil, it is about five degrees. And, you know, this is something that comes up in EAS exam questions. What is the optimum angle of attack? Uh, the answer they usually look for is about four degrees. Um, but it obviously can vary from, from propeller to propeller. So in this one, it's, in fa it's five. But, you know, it's somewhere generally in, in this range. Is where we want um, the propeller to be uh, at its best. So, with that in mind, let's say we have an aircraft here and uh, it's, it's about to take off and we have a course pitch angle. So, uh, let's assume the engines are running, we're at max RPM and the pilot is standing on the brakes. There's no airspeed coming in. So, you know, essentially our um, angle of attack is the blade angle. For, for this, for the, the purpose of this exercise only, there will be some air obviously coming in, being, being drawn in the pipe of the but um, we, we'll assume that it's minimal, so that the angle of attack is essentially the blade angle. Okay, so if we have a large angle of attack, you know, um, we will have um, stalled the propeller. It will be producing uh, thrust, but just uh, not a lot. And you know, we will have a huge, um, huge amount of torque. So the lift to drag ratio will will be uh, will be will be small. Okay, but it will be generating some thrust, so that will allow the aircraft to, to take off, or to start rolling, I should say, and it will start building up speed. So it, it, it rolls along the runway, and it's, it's constantly building up speed. And as the speed builds up, the relative airflow changes, and uh, we reduce our angle of attack. So let's say we've gone from here down to somewhere around here, which might be somewhere on this graph here, maybe on the lift to drag ratio. So we're still building up speed. And then we get towards our optimum angle of attack, where the lift to drag is at its optimum. We've a good bit of speed picked up now, and we're able to, to take off. But we've used a good length of the runway. Okay, so that's with a, with a coarse pitch prop. Now, if I had a fine pitch prop, we have a fine angle. So the engine is running, the pilot's standing on the brakes, uh, he releases the brakes, the angle of attack, you know, it's it's no longer out here, it's a smaller because it's, it's a fine pitch, pitch blade, so it might be somewhere along here. Okay, maybe 
let's say, 10 meters. So it will be producing trust. It might be at its most efficient, but it's producing trust. So it starts building up speed. It goes along the runway. It's building up speed and building up speed. And eventually, we get to the angle of attack here, where it's right at its optimum. So we build up a lot more speed, and then we can we can take off. So we have used a lot less of, of the runway. So for for takeoff, um, a, a propeller with a fine pitch would, would be would be ideal. Okay, and and if if you want short field performance, you know uh, you're looking for a, a propeller with a with a with a small fine pitch. Okay, the problem then is when we're in the cruise. So I assume we're gonna fly the prop when uh, the lift to drag ratio is at, some, it's at its maximum. So we're going to say 5 degrees. So let's here's our angle of attack of 5 degrees. Uh, should be the same on, e on, on each prop. Here's the coarse pitch prop. Here's the fine pitch prop. And you know, for a given RPM, if I want this angle of 5 degrees, then the airspeed into the, into the prop has to be different. So for a fine pitch prop, we don't have a lot of airspeed. Whereas for a coarse pitch prop, we will have a lot of airspeed. You can see it's, it's significantly bigger. So when we're in the cruise, and you want to, you know, you want to get from A to B as fast as you can, you want a coarse pitch prop, not a fine pitch prop. But if, if you want a good takeoff performance, you know, or you want a shorter runway, then you'll want the fine pitch prop. So we want fine pitch for takeoff, the coarse pitch for cruise. And that is the advantage of a, a variable pitch propeller. So with a variable pitch propeller, you would set the prop pitch fine for takeoff. When you take off and you climb out, then when you get established in the cruise, the propeller pitch will be changed to a coarse pitch. So that is the advantage advantage of a fine pitch or um, variable pitch propeller. Uh, probably see the more on the following graph. If we're looking at uh, propeller efficiency and we're comparing that with um, airspeed. So this this advanced ratio J is just the airspeed uh, over this is the rotation speed so revs per second times the diameter of prop. Uh, so let's let's assume this is a constant. Say so we're a constant RP, uh, RPM or revs per second, and the diameter of the prop doesn't change. So ND is a, is a is a constant. So just consider this then just the velocity of the aircraft. So you can see with a with a fine pitch prop, uh, ten degrees. You know the the maximum efficiency would be at at this speed. Now let's just try. Okay, so I've just drawn in uh, the max efficiency at, at this speed, so let's say that might be, uh, let's say, 20 meters per second. I'm just making this figure up. You know, and if we want to go out to, you know, larger speeds, so let's say out here, let's just say that's uh, 50 meters per second. This is obviously not the scale, but hopefully you get the, get the point. There will be the efficiency, but we're doing that at an angle here of 30 degrees. Okay, so we want a blade angle of 30 degrees at this, at this speed, whereas this one here is a blade angle of 10. And if the airspeed increases any further, say to here, we need a blade angle of 70 degrees. So with a fixed pitch propeller, um, you're sort of limited uh, in your speed range, uh, but with a variable pitch propeller, where you, you can actually change the the blade angle, you can maximize your efficiency across you know a large speed range. Okay, so if we're looking in here, efficiency is pretty high over this large speed. 